What's up guys? Josh here from Mad Charcoal. I'll be using this uh, ink pen today. It's like a calligraphy pen. I've got some charcoal on my hands, oops. I'm not sure exactly what it's called. I believe that's Chinese. So, I'm gonna do like a scribble portrait today. Should be fun. I'm looking at a reference here on my laptop. This is a reference real quick, just so you guys see it. That's the reference. I'm planning to do like the shoulders a little bit and the bottom of the face and kind of not continuing up into the eyes, kind of removing the eyes and the top of the head. Make it like a cool effect, I think. I like to do that sometimes. So we'll get like the mouth and the nose, the ear. Let's see how we go from there. Start placing in the nose here. So I'm not worried too much about the way I'm going about this. I'm not worried about the extra lines and where the lines go. I'm more worried about the value of everything. So I'm just gonna be not too concerned about each individual line, just kind of the general area where everything goes. Still looking at proportion. If there's something's wrong with proportion, it's okay. I'm just going to move it over a little bit or redraw a line, even though I have a mistake there, it's okay. I'll gradually try to improve on the proportions as I go. Proportions and the value, which are pretty much everything. You know, if you get those right for the most part, then like, you'll have a solid drawing, regardless of how you go about it. That's the biggest factor in the drawing, the value and the proportions. Um, so you can see it's already starting to come together a little bit. If I squint my eyes, it looks like this part's darker. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I love squinting my eyes at the reference. I'm able to see it clearer without any not actually clear, but without any distractions of the details. I'm not too concerned about each individual line. That's why I like to make it a little sporadic, kind of lose, lose the tightness of the drawing as I work. Developing it little by little. And I'm not working on one part of the drawing for a long period of time. I want to make sure that I'm moving about each different part of the drawing as I go. There, so that I don't end up with like an overworked area or a, like what if I'm working on part of like the mouth too long and it ends up being kind of misplaced compared to the rest of the drawing proportionally. I'm just gonna have like a really messed up drawing. So little by little, I kind of develop it as I kind of finalize where I'm gonna place everything, uh, what the relation is to everything in terms of um, value. So, and kind of about this point here and up to here, this area here, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in. I'm just going to kind of let the lines distribute themselves there and concentrate more of the detail and value effort in this section here. And I'm kind of figuring out like the edge of the chin is gonna be around there. So um, like it looks like that mouth size can go like right here this size can go here and like fit perfectly. So I'm just adding that in to kind of know where I'm gonna have that. And looks like the neck comes down here, just to the side of the mouth. And it lines up with this lower part of the lip here, the shoulder. So I'm just moving down that way. He's wearing a shirt. I'll make that a little bit evident. But not too evident. I like the raw look instead. Okay. And then to the side of the face here. The neck kind of comes down and joins with the head, with the face, without much of a change there, except kind of at about the height of the chin, a little bit lower. The shoulder starts here kind of abruptly. There you go. So there you go, I've had a shoulder there, kind of more of a structure to where everything is. There's a lot more shadow down here in the neck area, 
Although I don't want that to distract too much from the details of the face, like the mouth and the nose and the ear. So I'm gonna not make it as dark as the drawing, but I'm gonna darken it to show a shadow. I'm not gonna make it as, as a, uh, this, the, uh, what do I call it? The contrast is not gonna be as strong here as it will be here because I like the detail here and the focal point to be here. Wherever you have your highest contrast changes in a drawing is usually where you have the most attention drawn. Your focal point ends up being where you have the largest changes in contrast and the most detail. To set something back, to make sure it's pushed back in focus, you can use contrast and detail. So if you have less contrast, more more light and or more medium tones alongside other medium tones, then you'll have more um, of a setback feel. And if you have a lot of stronger tones and larger contrast with kind of more intricate areas like this nose here and this mouth, then you're going to have that kind of come forward. That's just the way our minds work when we see stuff. So that's kind of useful. You could use it to your advantage. I try to keep the outlines of the shoulders and of the face kind of diluted so that it doesn't compete and make the drawing flat. It doesn't compete with the nose and the mouth in this instance. And so it makes like the, the edge of the face kind of set back a little bit if I keep it a little bit diluted. Let me know guys if you guys like this kind of format um, of watching a tutorial or a video of mine. It's kind of raw, I just kind of go into it and tell you guys what I'm thinking at the moment as I work. I don't know if you guys would like more of a formal step-by-step -step process or just kind of know what my, just kind of see what my natural drawing progression is and the way I go about it, my thoughts as I go, just like I'm doing now. I like the more raw approach. That's what I prefer to do, just because I think that um, it's more effective for me personally, I'm able to do a better job of explaining something while I'm doing it rather than just like a systematic approach because I don't really have many systems. I just kind of have things that I tend to do that I know work, but like I don't rely on them like I do like a system. So just let me know what you guys would like to see more of or if it's a good enough format. This one will be interesting. kind of want to keep this edge of the face coming out a little bit up higher. Kind of have that fade out effect. Hmm, I'm not sure I like that area, so I'm just gonna scribble that out a little bit. It's a little more chaos, I would say. A little bit of a background tone, just a tiny bit. Or lighter and darker sometimes. This will work with any ink pen, really. Um, except for maybe like a, like a ballpoint pen would work too. You just have to change the pressure in which you work. I think some of the really inky pens, like a felt tip, a felt tip Sharpie, isn't gonna be as controllable when it comes to light and dark and strokes. I could get all these light strokes, but I don't think I'd be able to do that with the other one. So you kind of have to make up for that in terms of overlaying same lines, similar line weights, instead of just changing your line weights. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with where that, where that's at. I got a little bit of detail just there. Um, hmm, interesting. 
But uh, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one. Let me know if what you guys want to see next. I know I hadn't made a ink portrait demonstration on here, so just wanted to show you guys.